Hello everyone and welcome back to 4FS Gaming. Good decision making and tactics are essential in Hunt Showdown. In this video I'll be going through what I consider to be the 5 most essential tactics to master if you want to improve your game. Now this is more of an overview video. If you like this kind of thing I may make dedicated videos for each of these in the future going into a little bit more detail using some diagrams uh, but the background footage here is generalized b-roll of applying some of these tactics in the field. So let's begin with what I consider to be the most important of all, which is rotating. When in a gunfight, rotating should be your bread and butter. It's kind of like a default stance in a combat sport, and from this footing you can adapt to employ a range of other tactics, but you need to get the basics down first. It's like good footwork. The basic principle of a rotation is that you are constantly moving between points of cover in an attempt to gain a positional advantage over your opponent. Let's say two teams encounter each other while approaching a compound from different angles, they seek cover immediately, but it would then be silly just to stay there and keep peeking the same spots hoping to resolve the fight that way. A competent team will begin to rotate by shifting around the enemy's position and probing as they go, looking for blind angles and opportunities to place shots or explosives. The trick is to do it safely while maintaining cover. A good rotation does not usually involve running across open gaps between cover, but rather weaving across the map without exposing yourself to enemy fire until you are ready to peek and shoot. Rotating well brings a number of advantages. Firstly, it prevents you from peeking the same spot repeatedly, which is a guaranteed way to get headshot. It also allows you to open up new sight lines to your enemy, and if they are not prepared or aware of your movement, you can blindside them for an easy pick. Rotating also lets you encircle your opponent, limiting their options. As you move, you also have the opportunity to control distance, ensuring it is appropriate for your loadout. It's also really useful to rotate often as a solo player. Most of the time, you're going to need to be rotating backwards and on angles that line up enemies that might be pushing you so that they can't get around you. You don't want to get caught in the middle of opponents on either side, and so large, sweeping rotations can ensure that you never have to fight more than one hunter at a time if you know what you're doing. This is how some solo players with really good map knowledge can fight teams of three on the regular without actually getting pincered and killed. I'm sure we've all come across some of those really slippery players out there in the bayou. Now of course, there are a few principles that can guide you to do better rotations, and the first is to stay close enough to your teammates to assist if they get shot. You still ideally want overlapping fields of fire on targets, so your positions shouldn't be so spread out that you can't lend a hand when you need to. You also want to make your movements short and sharp. Long rotations while your team is in a fight takes you away from the battle for too long, and this means that your partners will be at a temporary numbers disadvantage. As I go through the other four tactics in this video, I'll refer to good positioning a little bit. And what I mean by good positioning is simply a state in which you have plenty of options to rotate into. A bad position is when your options are extremely limited, either because cover is too sparse or so dense that your movement options become funneled and predictable. So from this baseline, we can start to add on different tactics depending on the situation. Let's talk about flanking maneuvers. When you flank an opponent, you can achieve three critical goals that give you the upper hand. Firstly, you deny cover. By positioning yourself at a right angle to a teammate or whatever the enemy might be focusing on, then you will often have a clear line of sight to the target. If they take cover from you, there is a good chance that they will then also be exposing themselves to your teammate on that other angle. This means that after you land a hit, it becomes difficult for them to heal or recover effectively. A second advantage of a flank is that it limits your opponent's options in terms of rotating out of their position, as there are now two directions that have enemy presence, so they can only rotate defensively in a limited arc. Finally, you can catch enemies completely unaware by flanking. While they are, say, lining up one of your teammates, you can often get in a free shot at what is a stationary target most of the time, or at least a target that is strafing forward and back from your perspective, meaning an easy headshot. If they are AD spamming to evade your friend's shots, but you're on the side, well, that doesn't help them then. Now, of course, this works best when you complete a stealth flank by moving quietly to your new position. 
This is slower, so you better trust whatever it is that is holding your opponent's attention to be able to survive that long. The other danger with a flanking maneuver is that competent hunters can identify what you are doing, see that you are isolated, and then rotate towards you and initiate a push. Depending on distance from your team, this can make you very vulnerable, so always have a plan to rotate back to your friends if this becomes apparent. Okay, let's move on to essential tactic number three, the ambush. And I think many people misunderstand ambushing in Hunt. So let me explain. The objective of an ambush is to initiate a fight against an unaware opponent. Now this can be done when you expect an enemy to move past your position and they don't know that you're hiding in the area. This provides two advantages. The obvious one is that you get to take the first shot. This can take an enemy out of the fight before they even have time to react, and that is rather useful. Everyone knows this, and as such it overshadows what I believe to be the much more significant advantage of an ambush. It's that you get to determine the time, distance, and position of your target when you engage. That first shot can easily miss, but if you have good positioning and your weapons are in their optimal range, then you are still holding all the cards. Too many people just focus on that first shot, and they forget to set up their ambush so that they have a better position once the fight is joined. Some general principles here involve engaging within your effective range of course, but also trying to do so when the enemy is far from cover, surrounded by AI, on lower ground compared to you, etc. In order to set up an effective ambush, you should have good concealment to hide effectively, but in places that you can also observe your opponent so you can pick that correct moment to engage really, really well. You also want to ensure that the enemy does not become aware of your presence, so staying away from clues, the red flash of boss compounds, and enemies with dark sight is essential for the correct use of this tactic. Finally, you have to remember that ambushes are situational. They are opportunistic tactics for when you see an enemy that has not seen you, or you hear birds or a sound trap indicating that an enemy team is approaching from a nearby compound. Just camping in one spot and hoping someone will run past your bush or building rarely works, and it's generally a waste of time. You need to be flexible with your ambush tactics. Our fourth tactic is baiting, and I love baiting. This is a very deliberate maneuver that can take many forms, but the basic principle is this. It's a psychological game. You want the enemy to take a certain action, so you do things that encourage them or trick them into taking that action. For instance, I down an enemy in water with a carabiner, and I know that we are surrounded by multiple teams. In order to score an additional kill, I want them to try and revive that player. So I run around in the lair shooting the same weapon, the carabiner that made the kill, and this then makes the enemy think that I am busy with another team and not overwatching the body. Of course, I immediately go back and overwatch the body, which results in another kill. Now, burning bodies is probably the most common example of baiting. With choke bombs, salve skin, and a long burn time, it's pretty pointless as a tactic to remove a player from the game. That's not what I want to achieve with a burn. I know some people want to, I suppose, make sure that hunter can't get up, but I'm happy for them to be revived uh, as long as uh, I get to kill them again. So for me, burning is used to draw out players that I can't find because they've gone and tried to hide until we leave the area or something like that. They're avoiding the fight, so I want them to get involved. So my objective is to force an enemy player to reveal themselves and get within 30 meters or so by throwing a choke bomb or trying to tap them out. By applying a burn, I can do this as a bait. And from there, I can push onto the hunter who revealed themselves. Another simple example is a team bait, where one person sprints past an enemy's position or sightline and encourages them to peek a window. And then you're sitting there lining up a shot right for when they peek at your teammate. I've gotten many kills with this little one as well. Finally, one of my classic baits is when I have close range weaponry and there's snipers surrounding my boss lair. I'll take the bounty and run toward an extract only to double back on myself in an area of dense cover and then all of a sudden I've forced a close range fight which is to my advantage. Now you can bait all sorts of things, making noise, fighting AI to encourage people to rush you when you have the crown and king in your pocket. The possibilities are endless. Get creative and bait often. It feels really good when you pull it off and the more you do it, the better you will be at avoiding a bait when other people try it on you. 
Let's finish off with our fifth tactic, pushing. Now this is something that new players are scared to do. I get it, it's tricky to pull off a rush, but pushing a target is essential and you will need to do it to round off many fights or to simply cut down the time it takes to deal with passive players hiding in lairs and buildings. There comes a moment where the correct thing to do is push because you have an advantage and if you don't take that advantage, you'll lose it. The state of the game will shift and you will no longer be in a position to close out the fight like you once were. There are a few principles to employ that make pushing easier, but by far the most important is picking the right time to push, sensing when you have that advantage. Immediately after an enemy has been down from a peak shot is usually the correct time. A lot of players make mistakes as soon as their teammates go down, and you can capitalize on that. But otherwise, just when enemies are busy, be it fighting a boss or another team, these are also great times to push. You can make openings with explosives and flash bombs, and often a good hit signifies that it's time to go, go, go. It's also essential to push with your team. If you see your team going, you need to back them up, not sit outside or far away. In this footage that we've seen here, everything's been going really well. I've opened up my push with explosives, I've denied a revive with a hive bomb, I push into this building and get another kill, but then I try and push the main boss lair by myself, I don't check for traps, and it doesn't end well for me. You don't need close range weapons to push effectively. A quick swap to a sidearm or even a knife is certainly enough to seal the deal in many cases, especially when you're pushing as a team. The worst possible thing you can do as a sniper is watch from the outside as your team completes a final push. Give them a hand. Even if you didn't want to go in or want to get up that close, if they're making that decision without you, even if you don't agree with it, your chances of success as a team will skyrocket if you actually participate. Now I usually toss a grenade before a push as a standard procedure. It not only has a chance to kill and injure enemies, but it also causes them to move and that tells me exactly where they are so I can perhaps get a wall bang in or I know where to split up with my team when I enter a building or an area of dense forest or cover. In addition to that, explosives are also pretty good at setting off traps. So that means that we don't have to worry about them as much either. When you go in, have hip fire ready or a knife charged and be prepared to jump out a window if it all goes to hell. Generally, if you get hit but your team is still pushing, it's best not to stop and heal immediately if you're within 20, 25 meters of an enemy. It makes you a sitting duck and you can still really help your team in those short, quick fights by landing even one hit. This is often more than enough for a teammate to follow up effectively. As for solos, pushing is considerably more difficult, and this is because it's unlikely that you're going to have a numbers advantage even if you are pushing after a kill. For this purpose, I recommend either running something specialized like a shotgun, or not pushing at all unless you are very confident in your hipfire headshot abilities. Now solos can still push, it's just, it takes a particular set of skills and some of those are being really, really accurate. Maybe I'll get to that in another video. And that brings us to the five tactics that I believe are essential tools in Hunt. Use them well, but remember to aim too, because none of them really matter if you can't land your shots when it counts. They're certainly not silver bullets, but they do give you a significant advantage when applied properly. If you'd be interested in separate videos on any one of these with diagrams and extended examples, let me know, because that's certainly something I have the tools to put together. Thank you so much to all our Patreon supporters, because you guys make videos like this possible, and thank you to everyone else for watching. This is Ascendance from 4FS Gaming.